So let's apply the ideas that we have in mind on designing circuits using BHDL to the first of them, multiplexers. For instance, a MOOC Z, uh, a chip that is commercial, for example, in this technology, 74 uh, HCT, the number, the reference number 151 is a MOOC 8, a multiplexer of 8 channel. And this chip has a symbol that we will try to clarify and uh, organize in a way that is the same all the time. Uh, it, it is the same. It'll be the same all the time. And then uh, we'll proceed with the true table and discussing the equations. And if there is an algorithm or something like this, a high level description that makes us easy to understand how the multiplexer works. So we will go through pen and paper, a whiteboard discussion, and we will have some notes and the like. Especially we will take care understanding the enable input. What is the idea of the, that the circuit is enabled or instead is disabled? Uh, what is this idea around a control input? And here it is clear, you have in one hand data inputs and data outputs and then control inputs to make the circuit behave in one way or another. And we will continue expanding the circuit, okay? Uh, there is an idea here, how to invent a MOOC Z based, for example, on MOOCs 4 or, in, or instead or MOOCs 2, similar circuits of the same kind. So this is, it is the idea of expanding the circuit. Getting a larger circuit, for example, a MOOC 32 channel using MOOCs 8. How can that thing be done? How it is possible to solve this? How can you invent a larger component of the same size, the same type, using a smaller components like MOOCs 8 in this, in this case? So you see, there are many ideas behind the, uh, the multiplexer chip. And naturally, if we have to continue with the design, this means selecting plan A, plan B, or plan C2. Let's start selecting equations, plan A, as if we were yet in P1. And, well, later, or at the same time that we are discussing the true table and the specifications, we have another idea in mind. And this is talking about the timing diagram. How the circuit is, will behave in time, you know? Because this picture, this diagram, this timing diagram, uh, is for helping us to simulate the circuit by means of BHDL simulation test benches. Uh, the idea is to translate all the time, like this, you see, it's to translate the timing diagram into a test bench, so we can run simulations and in this way we can finally go through the functional simulation to determine the very important question here. The circuit that we have invented work as we had expected or not? And this time, it's going to be the plan A, okay? So, uh, it is about selecting a minimized equation, basically, because we will see that the table cannot be described easily using canonical terms, like Marx terms. We will have here, we, we have a two table that contains many, many Marx terms and mean terms, so this time the true table based on these canonical terms is not possible. So let's use Minilog to get or to get sum of products or product of sums that is going to make it easy the final translation to be HDL of a given equation for the circuit. Okay? So 
let's invent a MOOCs 8 BHD as the translation of the minimized equations. In the same way that later we will switch to the plan C2 and we will invent the same MOOCs 8 BHD that is going to be the top architecture that will contain MOOCs 4 and MOOCs 2 to develop the same MOOCs 8 by means of the synthesis tools and the simulation tools. And well, this is the first exercise, but you will see that that is all the time the same way. In this course, we organize the things so that each plan, for example, if you select to invent this the plan A and minimize the equations using a sum of products, if this is what you are selecting, this is a given plan, so this is a specific project. In a way that if you are inventing the same circuit using the same plan A, but now taking another set of equations like the product of sums, this is indeed another project. So it has to be placed in different portfolios, you know, in a different set of sheets of paper. And well, in the end, the great advantage here, because what you do is to invent, you know, architectures. So the great advantage here is that in the end you can simulate them all. Doesn't matter if you are using the plan A, the plan B or the plan C2 to invent the architecture that you have in mind. Doesn't matter anything of this because in the end you can test your entity using the same test bench. So perhaps because this is the first time that we do that, we will invent as well the test bench. But remember that this, this test bench, because it's attached to the entity definition and we will not never ever modify the pinning, you know, the port names, the test bench will be used more than once. Anytime that you have a different architecture for the same entity, the MOOCs 8, you can use the same test bench. So those are the main ideas here. So now you see we have plenty of concepts to apply that once and again. Let it be for selecting the plan A using sum of products, let it be for plan B, trying to interpret the two table directly, or even later for a hierarchical plan. So let's draw the two table now of this device, uh, placing in the left side the inputs like enable and separating that one with a dotted line. Then the other control signals here are the selector signals S2, S1 and S0. And then there is another type of inputs and those ones are the channel 7, channel 6 down to channel 1, channel 0. Those are the information inputs, the data inputs, and in the end we usually will do that sync of a double line and then the Y's or the outputs on the right side. So now we will start, uh, for example, describing the disabled mode of operation. So if this is, uh, let the, if this is set to 1, okay, you see, the device has been uh, has been established with a symbol where the enable is active law. So if here you have a one, doesn't matter the channel that you are selecting, and the, in, the, in, the data information is not important. So because what you want is a zero, and this is the special situation in which you disable the device. Okay, 
Then what? Well, then is going to work as a multiplexer. If you are selecting, if you are applying a zero, the chip is going to work correctly. So now, if you are selecting the channel seven, for example, with this one, 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 this is the channel seven. If the channel seven happens to be, let it be like this, you see, zero or one, okay, you can now use another type of dotted line to explain what is going to happen with the channel seven. You see, you are selecting the channel seven and the channel seven information is zero and one. So this means that doesn't matter what kind of information you have in channel six or down there to channel zero, because what are you going to do is to translate the channel seven to the output exactly as it is, a photocopy, you see? You are copying the channel seven to the output because this is what you are selecting. And you can describe that this way channel 7 selected okay then if you like you can do the same thing selecting enabling the chip and doing the same thing for the channel 6 so and, and so it doesn't matter what you've got in channel 7 the channel 6 information whatever it is can be copied okay as it is to the output. So this is the same idea. You are copying, copy in the channel six. You are selecting or copying the channel six and, and this way uh, to the end. So you can go selecting many more channels, right? So in the end, if you are enabling the chip and selecting the channel zero with zero 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 the binary combination that you apply to the select input doesn't matter the channel seven the channel six or the channel one because the channel zero values whatever they are are copied to the output like this okay So this is uh, the true table of this device, that's simple. Okay, you are expressing using binary numbers, ones and zeros, or, you know, inputs. That idea that what you've got in a given channel can be selected to the output. So this is uh, selecting uh, the channel zero. So this is the true table of the device, okay? And then what? Well, uh, you may like to investigate the data sheet. Take your time because it's very easy to get it through the, you can Google the number 74LS151 data sheet and you can read the data sheet and see the way the manufacturer, the vendor, because there are many of them, naturally because this is a very standard chip so you will see that every one of the vendors are using different notations and different naming conventions but in the end they are expressing the way it works like this perhaps i like to command this idea of enable if you if you if the input is set as e if you have an input like this, this is enable, and enable is written like this. This means that this wire is active high, which means that you have the same functionality, but the opposite values that you've got here. For example, in, the, in this example, in this symbol, you have E active law. So the chip is enabled, you see, enabled, with a one and here is just the opposite enabled with a zero well, that's not important but you have to use one level or the other to make the things happen so in the end it's about making a decision the circuit is going to do the right way okay 
So if you have the symbol and you have the table and you have examined some data sheets from vendors and what else, right? You have the concept map. Uh, you know what is the meaning of enable. This is a special signal that disables and enables the chip. And you know the functionality. Perhaps you may like to figure out how it is the second uh, how can you organize a larger circuit of the same kind? Okay, that's another possibility that you have at this level of uh, discussing the configuration of the chip. Okay, how to uh, obtain a larger MOOCs using uh, you know, simpler components of the same kind. That's another question which is it is important because the methods situ is going to be based on this idea of finding an schema that is hierarchical. So that is the next thing that we like to explain here. How to develop a MOOC Zate, for example, a MOOC Zate using MOOCs 2 and or MOOCs 4. How, how to do that? Okay, that's an idea. And the other idea that you can uh, develop here is the equations. How, how this table, for example, hmm? so you see, this is an idea that we will develop in the whiteboard later on. And then there is another idea because you have here the table. So the table, right? So the questions that are related to the table is how long is the table? I mean, this is a simple circuit, like the circuit C or the circuit K, or it is a difficult one. How long is the table? And here you may say that you have a lot of inputs, so 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So if you have 12 inputs, you have a table which is, you see, 4096 combinations long. Okay, that's the table. You have a single output. Well, right, we have why not, but that is not important. You may imagine that you have a single output here, the data that you are selecting. But look at this. The table that we have got simplified like this using this term, this is a don't care. We don't pay attention to the value, don't care about the value hex. So you see, the hex has given us the opportunity to simplify a lot the table and make it possible to write them like this in a very, just a small piece of paper, okay? We can explain the way it works using just this kind of simplification. Everything is here. Everything that we can talk about this chip is already here because we are using don't care terms. So, these do not mean in any way that you do not realize how long is the table. You see, you have a long table, 4096 combinations, which is, uh, well, uh, this means that, for example, if I ask you now how many mean terms the system have, for example, if this is the next question, how many mean terms. What is what you have to say about this? How many mean terms? Because the other day we solved the circuit C and we solved the circuit uh, K and we had, for example, 16 combinations and seven of them were mean terms and the other nine were max terms, something like this. This is what you've got in your mind now. So what now if you are trying to invent this real circuit that is based on a long table 
or 4,000 combinations. So you, you may ask the same question. How many mean terms, how many max terms the function has? How are you going to solve this? Well, um, for example, here you are a 1. And if you develop this channel 0, for example, like this, 0 and 1, you are copying, you see, you copy the 0 and you copy the 1 from the channel 0 that you are selecting now. So you select the channel 0, okay, like this. So this is what you do, selecting the channel 0. And in this way, you have a 1. So is this a 1 a mean term or a product? What do you have to say here? Here you are another one. So how many ones you have? For example, here you see that you have one one per channel. Here, in the disable operation mode, you have no ones. All the time zero. But then, depending on the channel that you are selecting, you have a one if this is what you have in the channel as information that you the information that you are selecting so it is easy to see if, if you expand that for seven for the eight channels you have eight one terms but what the ones are mean terms or not so simply Products, right? This is a term, yes, it is a one, but is it a mean term or not? So, no, this is not a mean term. This is a sum or many mean terms at the same time. Okay? How many mean terms do you think that this one is equivalent to? Well, if you have, for example, x1, this x1 indeed for example this x1 here not the x0 but the x1 x1 or xx1 if this is the channel 2 xx1 look at this x1 is equivalent to if you have to develop this long table of 4000 combinations x1 simply this is equivalent to 0 1 and 1 1 so every x, every don term, don't care term is two lines. So if you had only this x, the one belonging to the channel one, you will have two ones, zero, one, and one, one. Is that clear? So one don't care term means two uh, rows in this table. If you are considering now instead another x, the x for the channel 2, for example, now you have x, x, 1. If you say so, this is 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, because the 1 is the channel 0, 1, 0, 1, and 1, 1, 1. You see, two don't care terms represents 4 ones. So this, the one that you see here is not a mean term, but you may say that is a lot of mean terms simplified together in this single line. How many of them? Well, you have one one and then you have up to seven x's, you see? The channel seven, the channel six, the channel four, the channel five, the channel three, the channel two, the channel one. So this is up to seven x's. And in which way the x's, the don't care terms go? You see, one x, two combinations, two x's, four. So this is two raised to the power seven. So this is 128 uh, ones. And this is only for the channel zero. Okay. So now you are able, after this brief analysis here, which means thinking about the full table completely developed, understanding the meaning of the don't care terms, so now you can answer the question, okay, how many mean terms the circuit MOOCs 8 has? Well, if this one is 128 mean terms, 
and you have eight of them because this one is the same idea the X's are differently located because now the one is fixed at the channel 7 so X6, X5, X4, X3, X2, X1 and X0 are X's so now you have again another time 128 min terms more Remember that the mean term is just a row where all the values of the two table are defined. So y may be thought as a function of EL, S2, S1, S0, channel 7, channel 6, and down to channel 0. You see you have a function of 12 variables here. So, right, any possibility is here the case. You see, you have 4,000 combinations in which you can mix ones and zeros in this long table. So, in the end, the question, how many mean terms you've got is h times multiplied by 128. That is the solution, okay? And this is uh, 1,024. So this is the solution, okay? If you have here in this circuit 124 min terms, naturally the number of max terms is just the total number of combinations minus the ones which are uh, min terms. So you have 3072 max terms. That's right. In the second, you see, you go analyzing or thinking about the table and the symbol all together and imagining how you can make it possible to put the second in the right place where you know how to handle it. So that's the case. And then what goes next? Naturally, if I ask you, uh, invent a second. It is because this is about designing a standard circuit design. Design the circuit using the canonical form. That's going to be very impractical. You see, you cannot invent now a circuit composed of 124 product terms. Mean terms, right? That is going to be impossible. But what is possible here, probably, is to think about capturing this screen, this two table, into mini lock and trying to see if the computer program can simplify the table in some way that you have a lot shorter expression and perhaps that is the solution here not the canonical forms anymore because you see it's incredibly impractical there is no way to draw a ticket that is going to be composed of, you know, 1,024 products and then a final over of that size. So what is possible, if you like, is to continue uh, developing, you know, the ideas around the multiplexer, thinking about how to write the equation. Well, for example, what if you may like to think about this, what is the solution from Minilog? Can you advance something about this? Minilog is going to be the software that is going to capture the table and run and get from you, you know, sum of products or product of sum. So, uh, this is completely different. How many products you've got here? Well, it was right. You had 1,028 min terms. But you see the difference between now what is called a min term and a product? What was a product indeed? A product was a kind of a min term where many variables were missing because indeed we don't care about the values of these variables that are missing in the expression doesn't matter very much so this is what you've got here look at this you have 12 inputs but only five values are of your interest so why not to or all the products like that you see without even using mini log is that possible for you can you go solving this 
a kind of sum of products just examining the truth table without the need of using the mini log or perhaps using the mini log later as a method for checking your ideas well probably yes so let's go and solve it now so if the question is not how many minterms you had but how many products the circuit can generate that's completely different look at this y is going to be one one here or another one here for the channel six or another one and another one for the five and the four the three and the two the one and the zero that's the real solution of this you see sum the or this is the or you see the sum or of products and why products are not meant as well because we see from this true table that there is a very little number of inputs which are of interest here you have a product because you are taking care of one two three four five inputs only and here the same idea you have another one so you take care of one two three four and five inputs only the others are not of interest so you can translate that idea automatically into a boolean expression like this you see y is going to be what this one or the other one in channel 6 or the other one in channel 5 and so on so let's do it it's going to be e and because we talk about ones products you know because e is active is a zero is e not so the expression is e l not now and you see the and the product idea with s2 s1 s0 and then uh, you know the other value this channel 7 so you see and channel 7 so that's the term that's the product of your interest okay and then there is another one for the channel 6 if you if you now like to see it it's like this you can do the same thing as we did down there you can replace the channel 6 by 0 and copy the 0 or the channel 6 is the 0 and 1 so here it is you see this is the one that we are talking here and so it zags everywhere except in the channel 6 that is the one that you copy so the values from which you take care it are 0 1 1 0 exactly the 6 okay so this is what you can reproduce here very well like el not s2 s1 s0 and channel 6 but now the values are 1 1 0 so it is like this uh, s2 and s1 and s0 not that's the solution of the term and channel 6 because the channel 6 is like this you see it's a one and you go like this down you can now imagine the other ones very well el not s2 s1 s0 channel 5 and this is like that so the term is s2 s1 not s0 and then el not s2 s1 s0 channel 4 and the channel 4 looks like this i guess s1 not s0 not and you can go to the end in this way e l s2 s1 and s0 not 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 because this is what you see here 0 0 0 and then channel 0 so that is the well this is a kind of a sum of products that probably is the one that you will get when minimizing using a computer program like Minilog. Simply eight terms, okay? Eight terms, and that's all. So 
the second MOOC 8 can be solved using this equation, you see? And this equation can be very well translated to the HDL if you like to do that using the plan A, because the plan A is about the equation. So if you've got an equation from your analysis, for example like this, uh, by simple inspection of and discussion of the two table or by using Minilog, you have an equation, right? Whatever it is, sum of products or product of sums. So if you have an equation, you can translate the equation now immediately into the HDL, taking a sample example. For example, the circuit C is right. You can use the circuit C analyzed in P1 as a model in BHDL to copy and adapt. You can rename the entity for this one, and you can copy the equation of your interest to be that one. And so you have the source file. To start what? Well, to start the synthesis process using a kind of an EDA tool, and then you can follow up with a final demonstration that the circuit was as expected. I mean that this equation works for real. Okay? And that, that idea means that what goes next, you see, before going to the action of... Uh, because this is a kind of idea of planning. You see, you are already planning the plan A, because if you think about the equations, this is what you are doing here. Trying to get a, an equation to translate into the HDL so very well. But you see, then there is the idea of testing the chip. So what you have to accompany now at this level of introduction of specifications and theory, what goes here is a kind of a sketch of a timing diagram. So it can be later be translated into a test bench. So that's what you have to do now, you know. If you have a symbol, the table, and even an equation, what is necessary here to finish the discussion, this initial discussion, you know, even before going to what we said before, that was the idea of expanding circuits, even before that, what goes next here is to, to you, you get some whiteboard for, uh, for drawing a timing diagram, okay? Let's see how the circuit behaves in time using a sketch. Let's represent in time the inputs and the output, and let's apply some stimuli to see what is going on. Okay, so if we have to think about a timing diagram, in the end, what is the timing diagram for? Is for representing in time the value of every single input and the solution, the output. In this way you can advance what the computer simulation is going to give you as the right output. So. You have the true table, you even have the equation this time because it's not that difficult to get from the inspection of the true table. So now it's time for you to develop some values here. So in a way you can test the circuit itself. Okay? For example, let's imagine that the circuit is enabled with a zero and then there is a period of time, this pulls, where the circuit is disabled. So these ones means that the circuit is disabled. And what disabled, right? And this is that for this period of time doesn't matter anymore. You see the inputs are not yet uh, placed but you know certainly that the output is going to be zero. Why? Well, because you are applying a one to the enable input and we have developed that expression. So you see every single term is ended with EL naught. So logically why is that product uh, sum? You see the, pro the sum of this product. So if the term EL naught is like this, you know, one naught and anything else, one naught is a zero. So zero, 
0 and anything else is 0. So here you are y equals 0 or 0 or anything else 0. So it is clear that the circuit has regenerated 0. Right. But when 0 is the circuit, it's not blocked, you know. If you have a 0, you know, 0 not is just a 1. And 1 and with S2, S1, S0 and channel 6, the channel 6 will decide if this is the 6 that you are selecting here, you see? What happens if you are selecting the 6? So you are applying here 1, 1, 0. And in this expression, this means that E underscore L not is a 1. Then S2 is another one, and another one, and, and, uh, you see, uh, and S0, which is a 0. But S0 appears in this way, S0 not. So you have a 0 not. And this makes it to be, you see, in the end, this term happens to be, 1 and 1 and 1 and 1 and channel 6 and this is why the channel 6 whatever it is 0 or 1 is going to be copied to the output like that straight away and look at this if this is the 6 that you are applying here look at what happens now with the other channels if if you are applying 6 look at the the channel 0 you have the channel selected, 1, uh, you have the chip enabled, but then you have 1 not and 1 not and 1 not. So this is 0. So this term is a 0. It's not significant. It means nothing to the final solution. If you are selecting the 6, you see the 6 attained to the channel 6. So the others are not important because they are not considered accordingly to this selection logic. So the equation works and so is going to be the equation represented in time like this. Let's just start like this way, selecting or representing what is going to happen when the chip is disabled and when the chip is enabled. Very well, it's enabled in this initial region and this other region from this time on. This is enabled. Then what goes next? So you see this idea of imagining that you are selecting a number, number 6. Then you select another number, for example the number 5, for a long, another time. Then you select for a shorter period of time another number, for example the 0. And then, I don't know, the 3. That's it. So this means that you are selecting different channels. So if something has to happen, is because you are selecting different channels. So these times in which, you know, the channels are changing is when you have to consider, let's imagine that here you have another, the number 4, so these times are the ones of interest for you, if you like to see what happens at the output. So now the channel 6. Let's imagine that the channel 6 looks like this, okay? Something like this. You can imagine some activity for the channel 6. So the channel 6, this signal, because this is the one that you are selecting and the chip is enabled, is the one that goes through the equation to the output Y. Okay? So the Y, very well, is the representation of the channel 6 as it, this way. This is a 1 and this is a 0, and the 1 and the 0 are copied exactly as they are, you see, in time to the output Y. Then, the value of the channel 6 here is not any longer important because now you have to pay attention to the channel 5. So if the channel 5 happens to be, I don't know, 0, for example, let's imagine that the channel 5 is 0 almost all the time until this point when it changes to 1. If this is a given representation of the channel 5, this channel has interest from you for this time to the from this time to that time here when the channel 5 is not longer 
selected. So now the output happens to be, you see, let's draw that in, in that color. So this is the time in which you have this change from zero to one in channel six. No, no, in channel, sorry. We are talking about channel five. So channel five is zero all this time. No, this is, see how easy it is to get wrong here. So now you are selecting the channel five, okay, for all this period of time. So now you have to pay attention to this zero and to this one here. So up to this point, the signal has to be mm, zero, okay? So let it be like that, zero and zero and here a one. So well, the zero, <laughs> this time you have a zero because the chip is disabled, okay? have a zero for both because the five this channel five is zero but you know this is this is the fine channel five here and here and this is the it is clear right the channel five got copied down there and then the zero let's imagine that the channel zero happens to be I don't know uh, a one all the time to make it easy so if this is the channel zero value a one all the time now, what you are doing from this time to that is to copy the one, which is that value here. This is what you are copying down there. So this is a copy of channel zero. You see, you can go uh, representing signals and annotating what is happening. That's the best way to go through this. Imagine, uh, you know, apply combinations because this is what you do you see this is only one of the 4000 combinations possible naturally here you don't have to try it all just some values to see that the equation that you will later synthesize is going to work so you have selected the channel 6 for this time then the channel 5, but in the middle of the channel 5 selection, the chip went disabled for a while, and then the channel 5 continued, and then the channel 0, and then the channel 3. And I don't know, the channel 3 may be, who knows, something like this. Let it be that way for channel 3. So now the output becomes the photocopy of this section of the channel 3. So this way, okay? And so on. So now I think that is, is, it's very clear. And that's the way to solve a timing diagram. And perhaps let's pay attention to another concept. You see that we are marking in time we are marking in time periods in which the signal are changing from 1 to 0 and then 0, 1. The signal is changing because you change the channel or because you are enabled or disabling. And the way to do that in the simulator is to think on the minimum value in which the signal is changing. And if I pay attention to this graphic here, what I see is that for example, this perhaps from this falling edge of the enable active law to this rising edge of the channel 5. You see, there is a kind of a mean minimum pulse duration. Because, for example, something larger in time, like these pools here, uh, this time here, if this is mean pools, you may say that this time is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5.5 times mean pools. So very well, you can arrange everything uh, to this constant mean pools. And now it's time for setting a value for this mean pool, for example, one millisecond. 
And if this is one millisecond, you may imagine that you can run the functional simulation for 500 milliseconds. You see, that's enough time accordingly to the values that you are inputting here and the, the kind of this this sketch for example you, you may recognize that 500 milliseconds is enough because if this is five mm, milliseconds you know 10 so 500 is enough for solving all the simulation and that's a way to start uh, if, if, if you have to go through a professional, functional, complete simulation, then it's time for thinking about trying the 4,000 combinations in some way, automating the process of inputting data here. And then uh, the duration of the test, imagine that any one of these combinations is, for example, one microsecond, you can change that your convenience you see we select one millisecond because okay it's no problem we can select one second and run that for 500 seconds but it doesn't matter because this is a scalable to the time that you like because in principle this is for a functional simulation so the time scale is not important doesn't matter if it can be one millisecond and one picosecond for sure because it's a functional simulation, I insist on this. When we talk about gate level simulations, the time is going to be important. Because, for example, the circuit may be implemented in a given FPGA may work correctly if the time, the mean pulse is, for example, 50 nanoseconds, but it may do not work if this is half nanoseconds, you see? So, there's going to be a time limit, uh, a minimum mean pulse possible, depending on the technology in which the circuit is finally implemented. But this is later. That is a discussion for the step five in the design flow, gate level simulation. If you are in the step number four, functional simulation, any time is okay. So if you are telling the system that mean pulse constant is one millisecond, 500 milliseconds is right for finishing the full simulation. Absolutely. So that's more or less the many ideas that you have to have in mind before attempting to continue the design process that in this case consists of inputting the equation in BHDL and getting the MOOCs, you know, the next step here, because the plan is already this equation, you know, it's to design or to complete the MOOCs 8 BHD. And we will do that, you know, presenting the screen of the model sim computer and the node plus 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 as, as usual. So that is going to be the procedure, you know. The general procedure in this course is like this. Let us spend time discussing a lot or as necessary uh, the understanding of the problem that you have to solve. You have to solve here a MOOC. So let it be clear what is a MOOC, how it works. Is that possible that you can predict the output in time? Is that possible that you can get the kind of an equation? If this is okay for you, you can uh, try to continue transforming your ideas into BHDL files and then running the synthesis and simulation tools. Sometimes the plan is not, not, is not that straightforward because, you know, for example, if we try to solve the question that was annotated here, how to implement a MOOC 8 using MOOC 2 and MOOC 4 well, in this case, because it's a new and very powerful concept and it is attached to the plan C2, we will spend a long time discussing or many time discussing how to implement such a circuit, the MOOC 8, uh, inventing the circuit, considering that 
inside, you know, control C, when you go to the inner architecture, you see all the components of the same kind and logic. So that is a new problem to discuss. You see, if you are inventing the same multiplexer, Hook 8, but instead of selecting the plan A, that is more or less what we are doing here, we are selecting the plan A, if we select another one, like the plan C2. And what about the plan B? The plan B is also different from many points of view. Okay? So the plan B uh, is going to be discussed especially in the next recording because it's the idea is completely different. You have the symbol in one hand and you have the table, but you do not need equations in any way. So if you have the symbol and the two table, how to get something like this MOOCs 8 BHD to be able to synthesize? So that is going to be the problem solved using the plan B, okay? And that requires a full recording of this part because here we have the advantage as I, I insist on this once and again it looks like that goes expanding at infinitum but it's not true we will go and talk and discuss what is different from one project to the next because you will see that many many parts and sections are the same all the time okay I insist on this if we are in mind, if we have in mind solving a MOOC 8, the specification sections is, you know, recorded one time and, and it is valid for the plan A, the plan B and the plan C2 and any other plan that you have in mind, naturally, because the specifications are, are related to general concepts and the way the circuit works. Each plan is different, so each plan needs uh, a whiteboard discussion, paper and pen discussion and the like. That is the point. Class time, because this is where the things are different. It's not the same the plan A than the plan B and the plan C2. So this is where we will spend most of the time in class, talking about different plans to tackle the same invention. And then what? Well, the translation from the plan to the BHDL I'm advancing you that is going to be quite simple, okay, and repeatable. So that is not going to be in a problem anymore. If you have an equation like this, you see, and you have the experience from P1, which was based on equations, you have not a single problem in translating this equation to VHDL. Absolutely not. Especially if you have a circuit to copy and adapt. That is going to be the case for all the plans. Naturally, if we dare to focus and to organize uh, the CSD course in this way is because we have models and samples and skeletons and templates to copy and adapt all the time. So you see, the synthesis process is not going to be that different because, well, here you will see that the only thing that changes is the architect. So the S specifications is the same for all the four plans or three or four plans. Each plan is different, needs discussion. The transformation of each plan into a BHDL file is going to be particular, but it's going to be easy because we have templates to copy and adapt. And once that is solved, once the BHDL file is in our hands, then is an automated thing. Developing, it's, it's a machine thing, you know, you click return and the machine will synthesize the RTL circuit for you and the technology view. And finally, there is another advantage here, because we are designing all the time the same MOOC 8, this diagram, is the same all the time because you see this diagram is attacking you know is driving you see is stimulating the symbol and the symbol is nothing but the entity to design so the entity is generated uh, the test bench is generated from the entity part for the entity so the test bench 
is the same if you like. So even if you are designing the mosaic from two or three or four different plants, you can apply all the time the test bench. So you do that translation from this picture, from this sketch using mean pulses and the like, to VHDL as the process that the stimulus is stimulating the test bench. You do that once and you can use and reuse it many more times because in different in different projects naturally because the final idea here is to make it clear and make it possible that this course do not become something mess a mess you know let's keep that organized and well to keep that thing organized is very simple imagine that every plan is a different project even if you can photocopy complete sections, entire sections, like the specifications, don't, don't bother very much about this. You can photocopy the specifications three times if you are inventing the circuit using three methods. So the specifications are going to be copied three times and then there is going to be something particular, which is the discussion of the plan and the translation of the plan to BHDL. And then the process is going to go automated to the end all right so that is besides i have to tell you this is for the MOOCs but exactly the same way for the decoder for the encoder for the arithmetic sequence and the like so what you are learning here from the bhdl uh, point of view you know is repeatable all the time changing the device that you have in mind to design okay so that's another advantage of doing this like that so now the recording can continue trying to develop the circuit that we have in mind solving the plan a right this means that because this is something basic it is everything stated here in this p2 project so here you will find all the resources to go through the development and final testing as if it has to be a tutorial so let, let's do that as usual you see we have discussed the symbol and the true table and the timing diagram so this section of the specifications is already in our mind so and the same you can do if you brow some learning materials to get the pictures of you know the bhdl design flow and other similar examples like the coders and similar multiplexers like this tutorial on a dual MOOCs 4 which is a kind of a similar chip 74 153 instead of the 151 which is the MOOCs 8 and then there is also here tutorials on another kind of decoders the very common 74 47 which are the hexadecimal or binary to seven segment decoders very specialized decoders that are used to light and drive uh, seven segment display so the unit is complete with many learning materials and stuff that you can go browsing anytime you like so now if we have in mind the multiplexer the one here this kind of symbol the symbol in the picture two right so we can go to the planning section and examine again the general panorama and the flow chart uh, all the steps involving the bhdl design flow so here you can pay attention to the plan a finally okay in this lesson you have the plan a the plan b and also as a demonstration the plan C1, which is not going to be used, okay, it's not recommended at all because we have 
a replacement for this Plan C1, which consists of inventing a hierarchical architecture in a single file as the other plans A and B. We have a perfect replacement for this Plan C1, and we call it the Plan C2, which is this idea of organizing large circuits, but not anymore in a single file, but you know, using many files. Every single component is going to be a BHDL file. And in this way, all together is going to make sense and is going to be it's easy in some way. So now let's focus the attention to the plan A. In this way, after this introduction, the next recording can be talking about the plan, the, the plan B directly. We can skip all the previous stuff on specifications and general ideas of planning and we can go straight to the plan B in the next video. But this time, let's finish completely the sequence of design flow uh, talking about the plan that we will obtain understanding the table as usual as a structural equation. So this is the plan that it is in our mind. An equation, for example, the sum of products connected to an output that we call Q, because it's an internal signal from which we had a connection to a driver to obtain the Y, so Q is essentially Y, but then from this internal signal Q with a not, you know, an inverter, we can generate the YL. So this equation placed in this schematic is already structural and it is what we have in mind. The inputs and the outputs of the chip. So the full picture of this is clicking this image and here you have what we've been explaining again, another picture of the symbol and another picture, perhaps even better solved, of the two table and the equation that we've been discussing, okay? The eight terms, which are products, every product is accompanied like this by every channel input and the channel is depending on the number, the binary number selected with the select inputs and all together is AND with the active level of EL signal. So this is the equation if you simply go and take all the eight products, but if you like to be sure, let's check the result, let's check our equation or instead let's obtain the dual one of these the one which is a product of sums you know considering the zeros instead of the ones you know that you have 3072 maxims but in some point you have a few sums here one sum is going to be this term and then there is another eight sums every zero is a sum of some inputs and the final product of all these sums is the same function y. So you have both options here. To get this equation here, which is the product of the sum of products or the other one. And once you've got an equation like this, you can go and translate that into BHDL and start the developing process. So let's go through the mini log, which means uh, writing this table and naturally considering the don't care terms because if not you know it's impossible because the table has a length of 4096 4, terms so we will use as here the same way as here uh, the don't care terms but in this case in the mini log syntax the don't care term is a hyphen so this is what we are going to do right in order to generate the table file, you can go upwards to learning materials. And here, for example, in this lab three, which is specifically this design using plans A and B, here is where you are going to find the 
the table exactly here. Following the plan A, you have a flat structural BHDL design. So this is the table file that you can save as, you know, this time using the same name, MOOCs a table in the right place. And the right place, you know, that is LCSD and P2 and MOOCs 8. So this is where you are going to save the table. Okay, so you click save and that's the file. So once you've got the file, you can go and edit the file. Okay, so for example, let use capital for the while, for the Y output. So you see a keyword table and another keyword input and another keyword output and the final end. This is all what you need except accentuating you know and complementing the single line and you know this is the disable mode and this is the select the channel zero and down there you've got the select channel seven you see that's the table using the many times possible this don't care term, a hyphen. So now that we have edited the table file, we can go back to Dixies and in software section, we can browse for the minimization tool, Minilog, and this is a tutorial for using it. And so we can download the software, you know, the application, save the link as, and let's place it in the right folder which is the MOOCs2, MOOCs8, MOOCs8a. So save the file here is a zip file. So now we can unzip the file that way, extracting all here in the same place, extract. And let's go and use it. So the MOOC Z table is going to be the input for the mini lock minimizer. So now we run the mini lock like this, uh, run anyway, and let's attach to the window, which has to be somewhere here. Uh, this is the mini lock window very well. So file open and attach to the mini lock the MOOCs8 table that we have just edited now, select logic equations outputs, let's select single output mode as usual, here is not important because we have only one output, but now we can choose product of sums or sum of products, let's start by sum of products and let's see what happens when we you see, let's be sure that this is the file that we have in mind exactly. So now let's run and get the logic equations straight away. So uh, minimize, and that's the file that contains the logic equation. You see, it's not placed in a single line, so I will edit the file and place it all together in a single line. So let me do that now, and let me name it correctly because if we like to have both this is going to be the MOOCs 8 equation ah uh, MOOCs 8 sum of products and let me modify it let me edit it so that no not not like this but the other one yes no, not like this. Yeah. So let me remove these white spaces here. So it is all the solution, you know, with the inputs and outputs changed. So, but let's place everything in the single line. So let's save the file and now let's run the mini log equation converter. Run anyway, the same as before. And now let's pick up this file, the sum of products file. Uh, exactly here. So open the file and the system runs immediately. So now in our MOOCs 4, 
MOOC 8a, we have the MOOC 8 sum of products equation corrected. That is the one you see that is going to be required for exactly the one that we've been deducing from the observation of the two table. So an OR, you know, of eight products like this. Channel 0 represented by the channel S2 not, S1 not, S0 not, and the enable active low not and all of them the same way so this is the equation that now is going to be translated into bhdl let's see but now if we are able to obtain the dual equation so instead of sum of products we, we click product of sums we can run again the same table input let's minimize now and now the system you see is generating the nine terms which are sums this time Okay, and they are placed all in the single line. Here there is a white space, but that is not important, I imagine. So now that we've got both equations, let's name it. This time the new file is this one, MOOC8. And this is MOOC8 uh, product of sums dot eq. So now this is the file that has to be adapted. So let's go down to Minilog and run the equation converter again. So in this way you will have two plans A, one based on sum of products and the other on product of sums. So now you can use the sum the product of sums equation as input for replacing the variables. And finally, you've got the other file corrected, sum of products, this way. So yes, I ah, know this is the previous one, so it has to be product of sum. Okay, perfect. One term, another term, three, six, eight, and nine terms. The disable mode, all right. So look at this, if enable active low happens to be 1, 1 not is 0, and a 0 and whatever else generates a 0. And this is what you like for enable active low equal 1. So very well, now it's time for translating this equation into the BHDL file that I already have here, but now you can go back to the web and get it. From where? Well, from the same lab session. So you have the P2 and here in the learning materials you can go back to the lab 3 and here you have already constructed the MOOC site BHDL. And you can save the link directly into your project folder. So now you can open this BHDL file and inspect it a little bit because it's nothing but, you know, the MOOC8 entity that you know, the symbol in picture 2, exactly as it is. You see the channels here are declared as individual wires. You can replace that if you like to a vector, but in this case you have to change the symbol and we are not going to do that so the symbol is going to be eight individual wires for the data and then there is the vector here so the equation every single term in this or of eight products has been translated to the bhdl syntax so you see you may if you like particularize that logic equation uh, sum of products like this no problem. That's simply a name to define the way you are writing the architecture in this way. If you like, by your own, after the lab session, you can redo the same similar project but using the other one, the product of sums. So now you have the full example that can be now synthesized. Let's see. You see, we have to go advancing and we have something in mind now because if we have to use the quartus prime is for what for going back to our session p2 
and down there in the development you see this is what we are expecting here from the Quartus Prime an RTL picture that is has to be pretty much like this one but this one came from the manufacturer from the datasheet so now our synthesizer tool has to be able to generate something similar corresponding precisely to the equation that is based on a sum of products so let's start and let's run the quartus prime tool so let's open the quartus prime and let's fetch uh, the project location which is l csd the p2 mux8 that's the project location very well select the folder and now the name of the project is going to be mux8 project that's the name of the project and the top entity is simply the mux8 if you don't remember you can go back to the place we where we have these kind of things already planned for example here well the project folder is well you see csd p2 mux 8a and the files okay so let's develop the circuit to see if everything looks as it has to be so next now is for an empty project and let's add the files which are already here this one is not necessary now but i've got it here downloaded already so i will keep it it's not a problem it is not required now in this synthesis step it is for simulating but if you leave it here nothing is going to happen so you can remove it let me do it clearly like that so that is better you have only the architecture of the component and the design so you say next let's select the max 10 and let's select the max 10 which is in the board the new board that we have in the lab which is intel and that one 10 m50 copy and that's the device that i will use exactly like that one here you see so you say next and now the simulation tool is model simultera for the step number four in this design and this is bhdl not very long very long so you say next now after this summary you can start synthesizing let's see if the result of the synthesis looks as expected okay so this is the project navigator so we have exactly what we want the equation uh, not the one that i've saved you see sometimes it's interesting to make modifications in the text to see if everything is captured correctly but i'm not sure about that now because you see i had here a change on the name so i don't know why the file has not well the file is right but it's not exactly the one that i modified but doesn't matter let's run the synthesis tool zero errors in the compilation process so now tools netlist viewer rtl and here is where we are expecting the sum of products exactly we have a sum of one two three four eight products so the literals and the literals not and then the logic associated to the s and the like so well a circuit that is exactly or very similar to the one that we have in mind okay if you like to implement the modifications of a new output it is very possible to do that there is no problem you can modify the circuit if you like okay and rerun the process in which way well in the way that for example you have the why and then you have the why not like this uh, the why and the why not output now you have both
and what else you have to have here the architecture is like this but the architecture has to have a signal so now it's time for introducing here a signal so the circuit can be exactly the one that we have in mind so let's see how to do that of mixing signals and equations in the same architecture where is that the signal has to be declared before or after the begin so here is where it goes so you write signal and now the signal is going to be q and q is going to be a single wire so you simply say standard logic so q is a standard logic signal so this is because we are liking to design the the schema that is here in your mind you like to design this schema and this schema consists of a signal as well okay so let's do that modification so now we have two outputs why and why not this way okay the signal q is declared like this so now that we have this file modified we can do that idea of clean the project if you like let's delete all the files from the previous compilation and let it leave here only the MOOCs 8 and now it's time to recompile again so let's see if we have zero errors again the editing is not finished we have declared the signal and we have to make the connection so the signal Q is going to be the Y that way accordingly to the circuit that is clear uh, let's follow the schema okay the output of the equation is q and then we have a buffer and a not this is what we have to translate to VHDL like this so the q is the signal and the q is the output of this sum of products and now you know there is time and room for organizing the buffer and the not like this the output y is a buffer q like this that simple this simple assignment this is a buffer not a buffer and now you may say that yl came from the same key signal but not like this so this is a not this is a non-inverter this is an inverter that way so now the signal is connected to the output ports now yes probably we can finalize the project now with a proper uh, compilation so exactly if we keep an eye now on the rtl we see the y and the y not by means of this not that we have declared there so this is the previous circuit and this is the two outputs so now that we have a circuit we, we can see it the same way by means of the technology view and that is probably going to be implemented in several logic cells you see but doesn't matter this is what we have to test now so let's do it okay let's do the test of this circuit right and in which way well from this uh this Quartus Prime environment you have to start a new processing and this processing is going to be the test range template writer so you do that now and you have the file probably bht in the simulation folder so you have to go back to the folder and rename it and etc so let's go down here csd and this is where we are p2 mux 8 and the simulation model sim 
and this is the file that we have to interest in complement with the stimulus process so we place it in the project folder and at the same time we rename it conveniently so this is going to be the mux8 uh, what mux8 testbench bhd okay let's change the file extension Ah, I had it copied from another application, so let me let me delete that one and let me make that the correct one. This is the one that I've generated now. So this is the file, and the file is that one because I've introduced the why not port. So this is the file you see. But whatever, I can now edit this file, deleting the processes that are empty here and making room for copying the inputs from the web example and also making room for uh, placing here, I guess, or I don't know if it's here or after the entity, you know, the architecture signal before component or after the component doesn't matter. Before begin, we have to connect to attach the constant min pools. So let's go to the web and let's find the example down there. Now you see we have gone through the developing. So we have in hand now an RTL that looks pretty much like this one here. So now is time for testing. And here you are, something to inspect and copy for example you can copy the constant and but you know now that from the explanation we attach to these min pools one millisecond so let run this is going to be for run the simulation for 500 microseconds mm, milliseconds that is going to be enough that's enough. So now we have room here for copying the stimulus of this test bench. So let's do that from the same file in which we have copied the constant. That is the test bench that we will copy by default. And it is, well, it is basically quite complete because has activity for almost all the channels then if you like you can modify naturally so that's the file let's let's inspect it just an initialization and then some values are assigned to the inputs and the channel zero is selected and wait for a while but you see this the device is not uh, enabled it is disabled you see so at the beginning we have decided to disable the chip then let's wait and then later let's enable and wait for a while let's select the channel zero with the chip enabled you see this is what we've done here and then let's select the channel one and wait let's change values you see the channel zero is going to change from zero to one after a while then the channel 2 the channel 3 then there is after selecting some channels we have the idea of trying the disable and enable situation well it's been the chip has been enabled since now and now setting this value this means that for all these 4.2 times min pool this is 4.2 milliseconds the device is not going to be sensitive to the inputs it will, it will be kept disabled then enable again and the simulation continues inputting data for all the remaining channels let's see if them all are captured or are transferred to the output correctly so now remember that we have to observe why and why not if you like so that's the test bench let's save it and now because we can do that let's go back you know let's go back to the 
to the programming environment, let's use the model sim uh, Intel Edition to see if something like this can be generated. That's an example, you know, this is what you are expecting here. Probably the stimulus given in this example file is because it looks very much like what you've got in this picture. So this is what you have to expect from this simulation. So let's run, uh, you know that this means go to the desktop and run the, well, the Quartus or from the Quartus itself, if you have it configured, you can have the tool, run simulation tool, the RTL simulation that opens the model sim from within the Quartus Prime. This is equivalent to calling it from the desktop, but if you haven't got that option or you prefer to, you, you can call it from the same Quartus Prime. So now the machine is generating is opening the simulation environment. So from this simulation environment we can say new project and the project name is going to be well let's fetch the location which is the always the same MOOC 8. So the project name is MOOC 8 and now functional simulation functional sim and the word library is work functional that way so you say okay and now let's attach the files that already exist because we've been editing them so let's browse the files which are the MOOC 8 and the MOOC 8 test bench that has been generated now so you say OK, and the two files appears on the list, and you say close to the window, and now let's see if everything is all right, trying to synthesize them all, so compile all. So now everything is OK. So you see the test bench is almost complete, because we've been inputting the data here, the stimulus, so we can close the file and go back, and now we can just simulate. Let's run, let's start the simulation of what? Uh, work functional, the test bench that contains the MOOC 8 device inside to which the stimulus is going to be applied. So now everything is okay. The channel has been identified as proper inputs. Here you have to have the two outputs, the mean pools can be removed if, well, it doesn't matter. It's time for selecting and saying such a thing as add to wave all items in the region of this test bench. And this means that you have a window, a new window, which is exactly the one that you like. The the wave, the timing diagram, so you can arrange that correctly if you like. For example, let's add a divider, and the divider will outputs. Let's place the outputs in this side of the divider, and then let's organize the inputs as we know from the true table. That's a thousand times better. You see, you have the possibility to, to see every single selecting line, but they are grouped, as you like, as a vector. You have the enable active flow, and then there is channel 0, channel 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. You can see them like this, or the other way, as we had in the blackboard. Doesn't matter very much now, this. So we can go and run what we know, which is 500 milliseconds the simulation. So after finishing the simulation, the signals are already here, and now we can zoom it all. You see, we have been simulating a lot of time. All this time is not necessary because the variables, the inputs are not going to change anymore. But here is where we are going to inspect the results. For example, you can go from the very beginning when everything was not defined and then the enable was 
set to disable you see for and well let's focus the attention changing the format or the radius or well the, the format of these the properties of this output which is uh, color red for example like this so let's pay attention to the red output you see one is the opposite to the other naturally is the simple inverter so now during this time you have the system disabled and then you are selecting the channel zero so what is for you the channel zero which is this signal is copied down there exactly up to this point where you copy the one the channel one so the channel one happens to be this uh, changing from one to zero zero to one at this at this time you see you can zoom that so the channel one is from this point to this point you can add another uh, cursor to make it that clear you can add another cursor let me see add a new cursor and you can follow the idea so from this cursor to the other one now you are selecting the channel one while the circuit is enabled so the channel one which is this signal zero and then one is copied down there and the output fact really well and the why not is just the same information inverted so very well you can continue doing that thing to the end and you can all also check that for example in this period of time when the system is disabled the output goes down to zero so very well it looks pretty nice the result is just what you've been expecting so this is a picture that you can copy you can print the screen and this is a picture that you can edit and adding comments with your tablet or you can print the picture and so you can add here you know data so and comments so in the end you get what you want which is a picture pretty much like this so this is the full tutorial or the full recording of this experience that is going to be repeated uh, step by step again in lab three all right